So Sakura Wars TV wasn't really the best of what this franchise had to offer. So what was next? It seems like for every video game that's been put out for Sakura Wars, there's also been a corresponding series or OVA. The first to foray into anime was Oka Kenron, the four episode OVA released in 1997, about a year after the first game. It kind of amazed me because this is pretty much the perfect adaptation of Sakura Wars, in my opinion. So what's the story here? The first episode starts with the formation of the Taikoku Kageki Dan. Yes! We see Ayame Fujieda recruiting each girl in their home country. It's kind of cool to see what they were all up to before the events of the first game. Soon after the girls arrive in Japan, we're treated to a fight scene where Kana, Iris, and Maria battle against a monster. This is great in setting up for the audience all the skills that these characters have in the game. Kana is a martial artist, Maria is a sharpshooter, and Iris has the power to teleport. Right off the bat, this is an excellent first episode. I know this technically came out before the TV series, but comparing that to this, I was completely blown away. Just in episode one of Oka Kenron, we're given everything we need to know and we're treated to a fight scene. Episodes two and three fill in more of the pieces of the puzzle. General Yoninda goes to recruit Sakura in her home of Sendai. She was chosen for her proficiency in swordsmanship that's been passed down by her late father. He was a samurai who defended the capital along with Yonada and Ayame. By the end of the episode, both Sumire and Sakura are part of the team. Episode three might be my favorite. The girls get in their first battle in their new Kobu and they have to learn how to work together as a team. Sakura gets the chance to prove herself, and in the end, the day is saved. This episode ends with Sakura meeting Ichiro Ogami for the first time, just like she did in the beginning of the first game. The fourth and final episode is the only one to prominently feature Ogami. It takes place sometime during the first game. Ogami is put in charge of directing one of the troops' plays as a way to build team spirit. However, just before the curtains rise, monsters attack the city. This leaves the Taikoku Kagaki down, no other choice than to postpone their show and climb in their Kogu. They thwart off the enemy forces and make it back in time for their performance. Now this is a pretty short OVA, only about four episodes, but honestly this is my favorite screen adaptation of Sakura Wars. I think Oka Kenran can deliver for both fans and those who aren't familiar with the series. The animation has that perfect 90s feel and I adore how cartoony it gets. It also allows itself to have fun and be humorous. It's still got its drama in there, mainly about Sakura's family, but it also knows how to just let loose. Something I absolutely love is how close it is to the Sega Saturn game. There's plenty of callbacks, or in this case, call forwards, and all the characters use their trademark special moves. Even the score uses orchestrated versions of the soundtrack. It's not an exact adaptation, and it's more like a companion piece to go along with it. These are gaps in the story that didn't necessarily need to be filled, but having it in there adds to the overall lore and charm. Sakura Wars Oka Kenron is a solid entry, capturing the charm and the beauty of these characters that I love so much. A couple years later in 1999, another OVA was released as a companion to Sakura Wars 2. This is actually the first time we get to see Orihime and Reni, two characters I'm not too familiar with because I've never played Sakura Wars 2 or 4. I just know her as the Italian chick and her as the German chick. Here we get to see Ogami packing up to go to France for what will lead to the events of Sakura Wars 3. As he goes through his belongings, he's reminded of the memories he's had with the Taikoku Kagaki Dan. It's not as much of a narrative as Oka Kenron, and it's more like little side stories. Remember how I said Oka Kenron had a lot more fun and was a bit more silly? Yeah, this one is even more ridiculous. They definitely just wanted to have fun here. By episode one, we see Sakura jump like 30 feet up in the air, and Maria shoots two bullets and makes them collide. Probably my favorite episode was episode four. And this is also the most silly that this OVA gets. Here we see Koran going to model for a comic book based on a stage character she plays called the Red Lad. She arrives in costume, but before they could start the shoot, the town is attacked by a gang. The children end up seeing Koran, thinking she's the real Red Lad. As to not break the kids' dreams, the entire Taiko Kukaga Kidan arrives dressed in costume, playing the characters from the stage show to combat the gang. Yeah, it's ridiculous, but as I said, it knows how to have fun. Pretty much the whole OVA is like this. The last two episodes are a bit of a change. It's a lot more serious. Sakura goes back to Sendai to visit her cousin's wedding. Through a few misunderstandings, everyone is led to believe that Sakura is the one who's getting married and being forced into an arranged marriage. At least the whole troop planning a rescue mission to go and save her. On her visit, she reconnects with her family and we get to see the story of her father, Kazuma Shinguji. Again, I'm comparing this to the 2000 anime a lot, but this does Kazama's story so much better. Okay, this is where I talk about the Kobu fight scenes after all I'm a mecha guy, so... But it wasn't until I started writing this review when I realized there's no Kobu fight scenes in this OVA. I don't even think you see one. I mean, it's not a bad thing. The show stands on its own. It focuses more on the girls using their weapons, but they have their Kobus in the intro. Why can't we see them in the show? All in all, I like these two OVAs in different ways. 
If I had to choose the better overall series, I'd pick Oka Kenron. But if I had to pick the one that I had more fun with, I'd go with Goku Kenron. A few years later, we have Sakura Wars, the movie, being released in 2001. Despite being around the same time as part three, which followed a new cast of the Paris Assault Troop, we're still with the Tokyo team. The basic plot tells how the Taikoku Kagekidan held up on their own while Ogami was over in France. They meet a new foe, a corrupt American businessman who wants to take over Japan with his new robot that threatens to destroy the Taikoku Kagekidan. They get a new member of their team named Latchet, a character who would appear again later in Sakura Wars 5. Now I watched this movie twice, way back when I was first discovering Sakura Wars and for a second time for this review. Honestly, I'm really split on this movie. The fans and complete strangers to Sakura Wars all have different feelings and things to say about it. But here's my opinion. I think it's a neat little film, but if you know nothing about Sakura Wars, you're not gonna like it. If you know the dynamics between these girls, great, but if you don't, you're not gonna get much out of this. Again, it's just a little side story, but I feel like something like this doesn't deserve the big fat title, The Movie, underneath it. And now on to my favorite and least favorite part of this movie, the animation. I was blown away by the opening of this movie. It sees the girls perform Miracle Bell, one of my favorite Sakura Wars songs. The animation here and all throughout the movie is just incredible. It's honestly wonderful to see all these beloved characters look this good. The best scenes are when they're just all hanging out, enjoying the festival, because it's just so nice to look at. This movie's beautiful. Until they start using CGI. Yeah, this really breaks the movie for me. I know it was 2001, the technology wasn't there yet, but it's such a shame. With all the character animation looking as lovely as it does, I was really hoping to see a good Kobu fight. I think the biggest problem is they don't really feel like they have any weight to them. They're these big chunky machines and somehow they just float around. Like, come on, let them crash together or slam into each other. It's just so lame. Anyway, I'd say that this movie's a mixed bag. For Soccer Wars fans like me, it's a treat. I only wish they put more effort into the Kobu fights. Now, once you finish the movie, the day's been saved, you realize that there's still like 15 minutes left. That's because this movie ends in a stunning theatrical performance, just like the way it started. This is some of the best animation Sakura Wars has ever gotten. It has a stunning rendition of Subete wa Umie, my absolute favorite song from the franchise. Subete wa so this is going a little bit off script and this is incredibly sad, but Latchet's voice actress passed away right when I was in the middle of making this video. Her name was Akiko Kuno, and she was primarily a theater actress, and she didn't do any other voice acting roles, to my knowledge, outside of Sakura Wars, but I just want to take a moment to honor her a little bit because despite her role in Sakura Wars being somewhat smaller, she still gave an incredible performance in Sakura Wars the movie, So Long My Love, and of course the stage show. Rest in peace, you will be missed. So that about does it for the OVAs in the movie. There are a couple more, so I guess I'll just gloss over them really quick. There's a Col de Paris and New York, New York, following a couple offshoot adventures from the Paris and New York assault troops. Again, these are just pure fan service. In case you didn't get your fill of these girls, now you got them here. Maybe I'd appreciate these a bit more if I actually played the games they were based on, but for now, uh, they're okay. You wanna see the absolute worst Kobu fight scenes in the entire series? Yeah, look no further than here. These make the 2000 series look like fucking 8th MS team in comparison. I also don't know why New York, New York has such an obsession with feminizing Shinjiro. Yeah, forced cross-dressing is a big part in this for some reason. All I'm saying is that Ogami would never let this shit happen. Alright, so to finish off this review, I want to take a moment to talk about the strangest yet one of my favorite aspects of Sakura Wars, and that is the live stage show. Okay, so check this out. Theater is a big part of Sakura Wars, as you can tell. So big that they made it a reality. When casting these roles, the directors made sure that the voice actresses were talented in not only voice work, but also in performance. Starting all the way since the first game, and even going on to this day, all the Soccer World Wars cast come together and put on live performances dressed as their characters. Not only that, they also put on performances of the actual shows they played in the series, such as Journey to the West, Cinderella, and Kaijin Busso. So just to recap, these are voice actresses playing their characters from a video game, playing characters in a play. That's, that's wild to me. This wasn't only just when the first game came out, oh no. They did this for a long time. In fact, when I traveled to Japan on vacation in 2018, I found out that there was a show going on even then. These women are all amazing performers and it's always been my dream to come to one of these shows. One thing I absolutely love about the live show is how much these actresses embody their characters. Like take a look at Mayumi Tanaka for instance, who plays Kana Karishima. 
She's a little old lady playing a big titty seven foot tall muscle chick. She's shorter than Iris and looks nothing like her character, but you could tell she's just having so much fun with this role. And also, I didn't expect that Luffy's voice actress was such an amazing singer. She really puts her heart and soul into it. As an outsider, this kind of looks like somebody's auntie's in anime cosplay, but when I see Chisei Yogiyama up there, yeah, I see Sakura Shinguji. The effort and spectacle of these live shows is really just amazing. It's also just fun to see Tokyo, Paris, and the New York troops all interacting with each other. It's complete and under fan service. Like there's a moment when they all get put into teams to perform certain songs. Kana puts them into the Glasses team, consisting of Koran, Diana, and Lobelia. And you can just tell that Lobelia is just so not into it, it's hilarious. Of all the live shows they've ever put on, the crown jewel of them all has to be Sakura Wars Botokan 2. It's a three hour long show that includes every single actress from every single game at the time. It's just so much fun and it's also one of the rare instances where we get to see the New York troupe interact with the rest. If there is a definition to love letter to the fans, I think Sakura Wars Botokan would be just that. I'm a huge fan of Sakura Wars and this is made for me. Anyway, I think we could finally finish up Sakura Wars in just one more video, so stay tuned till next time. When I tell up the story about how my dreams came true and we finally got a new Soccer World Wars game here in America after more than 10 years.